difficult today to understand the heavy emphasis that's in the life of the church regarding the meaning of the baptism with the Holy Spirit without a reference to the Wesleyan holiness tradition to John Fletcher and to John Wesley. And in fact, the charismatic movement and the Pentecostal movement are all an outgrowth of the Wesleyan holiness tradition with this emphasis on the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Let me go back and explain to you the earliest origins of how this connection between Pentecost and holiness took shape within the Methodist tradition. We have to go back really to Wesley's Aldersgate experience. On May the 24th, 1738, he had been led to believe by the English Moravians that in a moment and an instant of time, he could have the full assurance of faith, something that the Moravians were emphasizing and to them, to be a Christian was, in fact, to have that full assurance of faith. That's what Wesley was looking for. Now, I'm not going to talk about all the meaning of Wesley's Aldersgate experience, but let me just say this. As a result of that Aldersgate experience, Wesley's theology began to emphasize more than ever the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. After his Aldersgate experience, he still experienced fear and doubt. And he was concerned about that because he thought he had the full assurance of faith. And if you have the full assurance of faith, you shouldn't have fear and doubt. So he decided that he would go to Hernhut in Germany. Hernhut was the location of an estate that belonged to uh, Zinzendorf, who was uh, a person of, of great means and uh, a very devout Christian and the leader of the Moravians. And he'd established an estate there that was really like a religious community. And so Wesley went to Hernhut to, to meet with what he considered to be the source of Moravian theology. And, and as I said, this had impacted Wesley very much because they had led him to believe that in an instant, in a moment of time, he could know that he was fully accepted of God and that he could have this full assurance of faith. So he went to get clarification on that at Hernhut. And when he got there, there was a carpenter there by the name of Christian David, very well informed, well trained, but that was his livelihood, was a carpenter. But he was a very much of a leader of the uh, community there at Hernhut. Wesley heard him preach and said, you know, if I had been able to tell him in advance what I wanted to find out, he preached exactly on the things that I wanted him to say. And here's one of the things that Hernhut, at Hernhut, Wesley heard Christian David say, that there are two classifications of Christians. There are those who have been justified, who have been forgiven of their sins and have a measure of assurance, but they have not had a personal Pentecost experience. They have not experienced the fullness of faith. They have not been cleansed from all sin. And Christian David taught that one could be in an instant of time, both justified and then subsequently could be entirely sanctified, except he didn't use the term entirely sanctified. He used the term full assurance of faith and being cleansed from all sin. Wesley immediately connected that with his understanding of the doctrine of Christian perfection. And as a result, Wesley began to emphasize that a person can not only be justified by faith, but subsequently to that, one can experience entire sanctification, Christian perfection, the essence of which is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Now, this was all part of the emerging understanding that Wesley had. But it was John Fletcher who picked up on this tendency in Wesley that he had learned from Christian David at Hernhut to emphasize and connect it with a baptism with the Holy Spirit. And so Fletcher said that Wesley's understanding of Christian perfection is accomplished through the infilling and the baptism with the Spirit whereby we come to love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. Not a perfection of performance, not a perfection of behavior, but only a perfection of intent, a perfection of love. And that the essence of holiness is not behavior. Behavior is important and is improved as a result of the experience of holiness. But the essence of holiness is love, love for God. Righteousness is holy. It's righteousness is, is holy love. It's loving God and loving others as one loves oneself. 
And that can only be done as a gift, and that is through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so this became very important in Fletcher's own writings, and he highlighted that, particularly in his last check to antinomianism, that got translated in, in, into this country, not translated, but renamed in this country as a treatise on Christian perfection. And it became required reading and standard reading. Francis Asbury introduced it into the curriculum of preachers in this country and it became the standard way of understanding Wesley's plain account of Christian perfection is that through the baptism of the Spirit, with the infilling of the Spirit, with Pentecost, justified believers can come to love God with all of their heart, mind, and soul. That led to what we think of today as the Wesleyan Holiness Movement. The Wesleyan Holiness Movement began with really an early Methodist preacher by the name of Merritt. And Merritt started a magazine that was called Christian Perfection. And uh, out of that magazine and out of that work that he did with his emphasis on holiness, developed the, the American Wesleyan holiness tradition, which led to, finally, at the end of the 19th century, a very strong emphasis on the Pentecostal dimension of holiness. And, Char and William Seymour, who was the... Uh, African American who began really the holiness, the, uh, the Pentecostal holiness movement in uh, Los Angeles, learned his theology out of the Wesleyan holiness tradition, really out of a school in Cincinnati that had close connections with Henry Clay Morrison and other Wesleyan holiness leaders. And so the Pentecostal movement is highly indebted to this Wesleyan holiness tradition growing out of Fletcher's interpretation of Wesley and Wesley picking that up out of, out of Christian David. And if I had time, I would tell you that that goes back to uh, what is known as Pseudo Macarius, the Egyptian. And, and he is the one who highlighted that it's through Pentecost that one is made perfect in love. But today, if we have a great emphasis on the Holy Spirit and on the infilling and the baptism of the Spirit, we're highly indebted to the Wesleyan tradition, stemming, as I said, from Wesley's initial contact with Christian David.